Chart patterns are a crucial component of trading. Each chart pattern offers a unique outlook on the potential price movement. Today we'll discuss one high probability continuation formation, known as the flag pattern. And by the end of this video you'll know exactly how to spot the pattern accurately and be able to trade it confidently and profitably. The flag pattern is one of the best known continuation formations in trading, which typically appears as a minor consolidation between impulsive legs of a trend. When this pattern forms on the chart, there is a high likelihood that the price action will break in the direction of the prevailing trend. The flag pattern consists of two parts, a flag pole and a flag. Let's take a closer look at each of these two components. The first component of the flag chart pattern is the flag pole. It represents a trend impulse on the chart. After creating the pole, a valid flag pattern will then begin to trade within a tight range, taking on the shape of a flag. The flag consists of price action with evenly distributed tops and bottoms. At the same time, the price action has a corrective character on the graph. In this manner, it is angled contrary to the trend impulse, creating the pole. There are two types of flag chart patterns based on their structure and potential. A bearish flag and a bullish flag. Each of these is the absolute opposite of the other. The bear flag pattern forms during bearish trends. The figure starts with a bearish trend impulse and turns into a correction, which is directed upwards. During the correction phase, the tops and bottoms are evenly distributed, creating a parallel channel. The confirmation of the bear flag setup comes when the price action breaks the flag channel boundary downwards. When the breakout occurs, we have the opportunity to short the asset. The bull flag pattern is the opposite of the bear flag pattern in appearance. First, it forms during bullish trends. The pattern begins with a bullish trending move which then pauses and turns into a minor bearish correction. The tops and bottoms of this correction are parallel as well. The confirmation of the bullish flag pattern happens with the upside breakout and we would prepare for a long position. The flag pattern has a continuation potential on the chart. A valid flag pattern is likely to push the price action further in the direction of the flag pole, the trend impulse. In addition to this, when you spot a flag formation on your chart, you can measure the approximate price target of the formation. There are two targets related to the flag formation. The first target of a confirmed flag pattern can be derived using the measured move technique. The measured move target is a distance equal to the size of the flag. To measure the size of the flag, you would just take the vertical distance between the upper and the lower channel within the flag. Then, you would apply this distance starting from the breakout point. Your first target is located at the end of this distance. The next target of the flag formation equals to the size of the flag pole. So, to get this target, you need to measure the vertical distance between the highs and the lows of the pole. Once you get that distance, you will need to apply it to the pattern. Again, as we did it with target 1, you would apply it starting from the breakout point. Now that we discuss some of the characteristics of the bull and bear flag, Let's create a concrete trading strategy around this setup. At first, I want to add two exponential moving averages to help us identify an uptrend or a downtrend easily. In this case, I added the 21 and the 55 EMA, but you can choose any length you prefer. When the 21 EMA is above the 55 EMA, we consider the market to be in an uptrend. So we want to start looking for the bull flag pattern when the 21 EMA has crossed above the 55 EMA. If the 21 EMA is below the 55 EMA, we will look for bear flag patterns. Why this filter? Because when the market is trading above the 21 EMA for example, it means there's a strong momentum to the upside, and any bull flag patterns that are formed above the 21 EMA have a higher chance of succeeding. To enter a flag pattern trade, you should first obtain a confirmation signal. The confirmation of the flag comes with a breakout. If you have a bullish flag, you will buy when the price action closes a candle above the upper side. If you have a bearish flag, then you would sell the asset when you see a candle closing below the lower level of the pattern. One basic rule should be considered when determining the proper stop loss placement. If the price breaches the opposite side of the breakout, then you should immediately exit the trade because the pattern is most likely false. The most logical location to place the stop loss would be beyond the most extreme swing within the flag structure. So, if you are trading a bullish flag, then your stop should be placed below the lowest bottom in the flag. 
the take profit for the flag pattern should be addressed using the two targets we discussed earlier. It's up to you which target you are going to pursue. However, I would suggest taking profit at each target level to reduce risk and book profits. To enter into a trade using the flag pattern, I also prefer to look for a candlestick pattern that forms on the dynamic area offered by the two EMAs, namely the engulfing candle and the pin bar. These two candlestick patterns are the trigger for us to get into a trade. If you trade a bullish flag for example, and you have a bullish candlestick that forms on the 21 EMA, it suggests that the EMA has held up as a dynamic support level. At the same time, a bullish candlestick pattern suggests that the market has a good chance of going up after its formation. Basically you want a confluence of these elements to give you a high probability of the trade working out. So how do you get into a trade once these candlestick patterns appear? There are two main entries. The first one was to wait for a breakout, which is a more conservative way to trade. The second entry method is a more aggressive entry because you don't wait for a confirmation of the move and take a trade before the breakout, at the close of the candlestick pattern inside the flag pattern or at the break of the high or the low of the candlestick. By confirmation, it means to wait for another event to happen to give you a better indication that the market will go up for example, if you trade a bull flag. This means you don't wait for the breakout to happen. With this entry, you will have a higher risk to reward ratio for the same take profit level, but the trade-off is that you will get stopped out more often. The ideal scenario would be a pin bar or an engulfing candle that forms right when the price breaks the flag, but this is a rare setup. I prefer to have a confluence of factors, namely the price rejecting the dynamic area formed by the two EMAs, the formation of a candlestick pattern and a flag breakout. With any trading setup, the more signals you have supporting the direction of your trade, the higher the chances of your trade working out. Here are several examples of valid trades. If you trade stocks, many traders use volume as an added confluence of trade signals. What you want to look out for is for an increase in volume when the market starts moving up from the bull flag pattern for example. Here you can see that the volume has increased when the market broke out from the bull flag pattern. This shows that there are buyers coming in to push the market up and this gives traders an added validation that the bull flag pattern has a higher chance of working out. As a side note. In the forex market you can't use volume because there's no centralized exchange. This means the volume you see in the forex market is not an accurate representation of the total volume in the market. You can also increase the flag pattern's probability with divergence. A divergence is when the market is moving in a different direction than your indicator. There are a few indicators that can identify divergences, but what I like to use is the stochastic oscillator. To identify a divergence on the bull flag pattern for example, what we are looking for is for the market to be forming a higher low, but the stochastic oscillator to form a lower low. This is called a hidden divergence. Also remember the previous confluence elements we discussed before. Thus, at the point where the candlestick pattern is formed, we want to see the stochastic oscillator to form a lower low. 
Here's an example. We have hidden divergence, as the market is making a higher low, but the stochastic oscillator is making a lower low. The setup is even more powerful if it contains a candlestick formation or if the price rejects the dynamic area formed by the two EMAs. So whenever you are looking for an entry, you want to see that there is a hidden divergence to give you the added confluence that the flag pattern will work out. Here you can see that the market is clearly in a downtrend. The 21 EMA is below the 55 EMA and the market is forming lower lows and lower highs. The market went down and formed a bear flag pole in a few bars. After that, the market started consolidating and moved sideways. If you notice, the bars are relatively smaller as well. This is a sign that the market is preparing for a possible downwards move. Just as the price entered the dynamic resistance area, it formed a bearish engulfing candle. At this point, you can see that the stochastic oscillator is indicating a hidden divergence. So this is a valid trade signal. The market will give you many opportunities to trade this setup, however, you don't want to make the mistake of trading every single one of them. You will be tempted to trade it every time it shows up, but if you see a flag pattern that doesn't fulfill our confluence setup, give it a miss. Be patient and wait for the next opportunity. If you got any value from this and learned something new, leave us a like to show your support, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to stay in touch with new uploads. Until next time.